Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to look at a video of looking at cervical range of motion and one thing that I look at, or I've started to look at whenever I'm looking at range of motion for the neck and trying to tease out if it's really optimal or if it's kind of masking or compensating for some other things. And with uh, the Institute of Physical Art group that I get to teach with, one of the nice things that we do as an objective measure to just look at cervical range of motion is have our hands along the shoulder girdle here where kind of the base of our hand and palm area is right along the AC joint and our fingertips are coming right along the line of that upper trap or right where the posterior part of the articular pillars are. And whenever our patient will turn their head to the left, however far they can, we can kind of measure along where it touches part of our hands, the side of their cheek, and determine how optimal you know, that function is based on that so and come back. And you look at, as he turns, go ahead and turn the left again, you look at, he's got pretty good range of motion turning to his left, and I'd say, you know, based on how we measure that, that's 90, 95% come back. And when he goes to his right, go to your right, not quite as good, but it's maybe 75%, you know, really not that bad still, even though there's a difference. But one of the things that you'll often see with patients is that they compensate, right? They can't move around certain things, so they have to cheat somehow. And with uh, something that I've been looking at is not letting them cheat, basically. So whenever he's going to be turning to one side, I'm going to have my hands around his head to make sure that he stays in this uh, neutral position and he doesn't come out of it. So if he's really as good as he looks, he'll still be able to turn the whole way around. So I'm going to maintain that neutral place and guide him, basically. So he's turning to his left. and you can see he's still got virtually that full range of motion turning to the left, so pretty good. Come back. If we look at it going the other direction though, I'm gonna guide him the same way. You can, if you're the therapist and you're feeling this, you can start to palpate and feel a sense. He's got a lot of tension developing in his neck right here. Far cry less than what he had before, so stay right there for me. And then I can redo the same thing, and he's, I would say he's not even 50%. So a lot of compensating going on whenever he's trying to turn his head to the left, very asymmetrical turning this way compared to his, or when he's going to the right, very asymmetrical when he's going right compared to his left. So this is definitely you know, not ideal for him, but you can see he can keep going if he compensates by either extending or side bending along the way. And that's something that you might notice as you're checking patient's range of motion. They poke their chin out like this to really get beyond a barrier, or they start to tilt their head back and side bend it this way the further they go. So keeping them in this kind of position will really help to tease out what is actually cheating or what is actually true in terms of their true range of motion that way. So uh, anyway, that's something that I've been looking at and showing a few people here and there whenever I do get to teach a couple of courses. And responds pretty favorably, especially when we're doing different treatment throughout the neck, whether it's soft tissue or joint mobilization or even upper thorax or, or uh, shoulder girdle. Um, does make a difference in terms of actual proper range of motion keeping in one plane versus incorporating other planes whenever they compensate. So. Um, check it out, see what you think, tell me what you think, I really appreciate it. Otherwise, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.